have here is a Firefox OS phone pr uh, produced by ZTE called ZTE Open. It's a low-spec phone for a market that actually cannot afford high-spec phones. The idea of the Firefox OS operating system is that we bring so, uh, smart uh, phone, uh, phone functionality to a market that actually right now only can afford feature phones. The interactions are what you expect from any smartphone out there. You go left uh, to actually go to your applications. You see up there how many applications and how many screens you have. To, uh, swiping to the left always means you go to the search, which indexes all the applications that you have on your phone for you already, so you don't have to create these folders yourself. You've got a tab from above, which actually gives you all the notifications in case you got text messages or something like that, or updates from Facebook. You have your connectivity here, I'm on 3G and wireless, and you can go into, uh, into phone mode. You can go into settings with this shortcut here as well, to define all the settings of your phone which is like you would expect with any other out there, just settings. You've got uh, de defined uh, uh, app permissions per app that can change up, uh, after it ran as well, so you don't only do it once. And uh, with the apps as well, you can uh, set them into the dock, so I can take the AccuWeather app here right now and put it down into the dock if I wanted to. And if I want to get it back, I can actually move it out of the dock as well. It, it can also shift the apps around, so I can shift them from screen to screen. It's simple, but it works like any other phone. We didn't want to reinvent it because people don't like to learn new things for every phone. So we don't want to compete with Android and iOS. We actually want to make sure that people who cannot afford smartphones can have web connectivity and be part of the app world that other people are as well. So other than that, it's a phone like any other. I've got my telephone, I can call my friends, which is good to have on a phone, but more, less and less people use it. I've got my contacts, which have been imported from Facebook, so I don't have to actually type anything new in there. I've got my applications, which are the ones that you expect, Twitter, Facebook, Airbnb, news apps, MTV for Brazil, some games, they all come out of the box with the phone already. I've got a marketplace, much like any other phone has, so I can actually buy applications from the marketplace with my credit card. But the benefit of this system is that we, we partnered with, uh, with phone providers that you don't have to have a credit card to buy applications. You can also get them on your telephone bill or on prepaid cards. So if you actually have only a 50 euro card for your kids, they can only buy 50 euro worth of applications rather than giving you a big shock when you, when you check your credit card again. The other benefit of this one is, is that as the applications are HTML, they're much, much smaller than the other applications that you would expect. So on a device where I'm paying per megabyte in a, in a market, I don't need to download 23 meg for Twitter, but only 2 meg, for example. As these apps are HTML5, they're as easy to find as websites. So what we build is this dynamic app search, which is really interesting. So if I enter, for example, U2 the band here, it finds out that it's a band, it gives me a background image of the band already, and it gives me applications that have information about U2. YouTube has videos, Groove Shark has music, Wikipedia has content, Metro Lyrics has lyrics, Amazon I can buy CDs from U2, and so on and so forth. So the benefit of that one is I can try these apps out before I buy them. So I click on the app, it loads the, it loads the SoundCloud app, I can listen to a YouTube song, but I don't have to install the application, don't have to enter my credit card details, don't have to enter my identity, I just want to listen to a song. Once I listen to the song and I like SoundCloud, I can go back and I can actually uh, do a long click on it and start installing it like any other application as well. The applications are online and offline. Although they're HTML, they can totally work offline. You don't have to be online all the time. You can download them on your wireless at home. You have your maps as well that we partner with Nokia to have the year maps, which are very, very fast on this device compared to others. So I can actually scroll around, I can zoom in, I've got a multi-touch thing going, everything works like you expect it to do. And this is what it is. It's an open source uh, operating system for devices that are very affordable in markets that right now don't have any smartphones. And this is what Firefox OS is about.